Welcome into the next video in the series here. Uh, where the helmet stands at this point, this is actually the third and hopefully final coat of Bondo. It's a very thin coat. Uh, if you remember back to the first Bondo video, uh, what we basically did on that first coat was we filled in the low spots and when we sanded down we used our high spots in the paper, our joint uh, lines to tell us when to stop sanding. Once we hit those paper lines we stopped sanding. Uh, that was the last bit of Bondo work you've seen. Since then I've added a second layer of Bondo uh, basically just to cover those high spots, those lines that came through that we sanded down to on the first coat. Those have all been covered over with the second layer. Uh, they've been sanded down again and when we sanded down the second time we did not want the uh, paper lines to come back through. There's just enough on there just so that they're covered. Uh, for the most part, there is a couple little spots. You can see where a little bit of paper is coming through. You don't have to get every single last area, but uh, just get the majority of it. Uh, so where it's at now, I've applied a third layer of Bondo, which isn't uh, meant to do any kind of shaping really to the helmet. You should have taken care of that on the first and second coat. The third coat was mainly to smooth out the Bondo work that we already had on there. Uh, just to fill in craters, you know, pinholes, uh, scratches, things like that. Now you don't have to go over the entire helmet like I did for this third coat. You can basically just mix up a little bit of Bondo and anywhere you see a a crater, a, you know, a little imperfection, just fill that little area in and move on to the next area. Go over the entire helmet and uh, just fill in those spots. Now I just did a very light coat over the entire thing because there were quite a few of those spots. So uh, basically I'm going to get this sanded down. I've, uh, I've been using the 150 grit paper on this last uh, sanding of the Bondo, I'm going to start with 150 and I'll end with 220 grit. That's here. I'm still using my hand sanding block, doing all this by hand. Uh, hopefully, you caught the last video. If you didn't, I did make another change to the helmets. I changed the upper lip areas here. The, uh, the original design of this had an extra little uh, protrusion here, an extra little detail, which uh, is not movie accurate, so I basically ground that off and bonded that smooth. Okay, we can get started sanding this down now. I'm going to start with my 150. I know I already made a uh, sanding video, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit more in detail how I sand. It's not just as simple as throwing a block on there and just starting to sand. Uh, basically what I do is I hit this from four different directions. Uh, I'll start vertically up and down. Once I get the majority of it done, uh, I'll go left to right with it. Then I'll go from uh, lower right to upper left, pretty much on like a 45 degree angle. And then I'll go from left to right on the other angle. That's helping you to hit every area from multiple angles uh, because this is not just one angle. Uh, for this top piece, for instance, uh, it slopes down. It also curves over this way. So if you just sand it in one direction, you might have that direction fine, but the other direction might be off. Now, if you're using a, uh, an electric sander, that really doesn't matter because electric sanders uh, orbital sanders, random orbit sanders, they all sand in different directions all at once. This is only if you're hand sanding. You need to uh, go in different directions to hit every possible angle you can. Another thing I wanted to mention, uh, after your Bondo is dried up, it doesn't matter what coat you're on, after your Bondo is dried up and you're ready to start your sanding, the outside layer should still be a little bit tacky. Bondo really doesn't cure the whole way on that outside layer. Uh, this has been sitting for, I don't know, maybe three or four hours and it's still a little bit tacky. 
Uh, as soon as you hit this with your sandpaper though, that tackiness will go away. Uh, it's just something to, uh, just wanted to let you guys know about it. Don't think that you didn't add enough hardener or something like that. Uh, it's fine. So I'm just going to work on this. Again, I'm using 150. I usually like to uh, get my edges cut in all around first with the sanding and then I'll go back and hit the middle areas. Okay, just like that. And it's still going to clog your sandpaper up a little bit. If you can see that, that's sort of that outer skin that's still tacky. That's what's clogging up your sandpaper. But as soon as you're through that, it'll be a lot easier to sand. I wouldn't suggest using something like a file on this third coat, since this is pretty much a finished coat. Uh, you could use this to get that outer skin of Bondo off, that tacky layer. Uh, but it's going to dig into it a little bit too much, I think, uh, for a final coat. So we'll just sacrifice a couple pieces of sandpaper to get that off. You know, sandpaper's cheap. I get my sandpaper at Harbor Freight for uh, $2 for 10 sheets, so I'm not really worried about using up a piece or two of sandpaper. Alright, so I've hit it up and down. I'll throw this away since it's clogged. Get another piece. And now we'll move left to right. You don't have to try and get it uh, absolutely smooth on one pass for example left to right like I am now because you're going to be hitting it three more times up and down diagonal this way diagonal this way and after this 150 you're still going to be hitting it with some 220 so you don't have to get every little bit of it sanded down on whatever direction you're doing at that time Okay. You can also go in circles if you want. Doesn't really matter, just as long as you hit it from different angles. Alright, so that's starting to get nice and smoothed out. Sandpaper is pretty much clogged again. Okay, throw that away. I'll bring back the video after I have. Uh, all of this sanded down with 150 and we'll start with the 220 and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I've uh, run out of sandpaper now but I did get the face piece and the top of the head done also the sides here done uh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning can't run out and get any sandpaper right now so uh, the bottom half pretty much will have to wait till tomorrow uh, I finished with the 220 grit paper so this is sort of the surface we're looking at now there's still some scratches in there and uh, you know little defects what I'm actually going to do right now uh, is get a little bit of primer on this on the parts that I have sanded down to the 220 I'm going to go ahead and just spray a real light coat of primer on there uh, so I can see a little bit better where I need to add Bondo, where I need to uh, maybe add a little spot putty to fill in some of these little tiny craters and scratch marks. Uh, it's pretty hard to see until you get that coat of primer on there. So I'll prime up this top half and the sides where I have done and uh, I'll get some sandpaper tomorrow, finish up the bottom and get a light coat of primer on that. Screw a little bit of blue painters tape over the, uh, the areas that I don't have sanded yet keep some of the overspray off. Uh, no, it's not critical. That's just my uh, OCD perfectionist mentality. 
Uh, most of this is going to get sanded off anyways. Uh, so I'm going to hit the top, the parts that I do have sanded. I'm going to use some Rust-Oleum Primer Sealer. It actually seems like some progress is being made once you see that primer go on. Alright, it's the uh, next day. I picked up some more sandpaper and got the bottom half of the helmet sanded down. So this is where we're at right now. Uh, this took probably close to three hours worth of sanding, hand sanding, uh, just to get this bottom area all the way around and pretty much the entire back of the helmet sanded. Uh, it's not perfect, it's not meant to be. Uh, we'll get a coat of primer on here. I did uh, add a little bit more Bondo to the face piece here. There was a bit of a flat spot so I uh, added a little bit more, uh, feathered it out, finished with the 220 grit paper again and uh, blended it all in. So I'm just about ready to get the primer sprayed on here again so the whole thing will be uh, nice and primered up and one solid color I'll be able to see all my imperfections. I still have some work to do at the bottom but I'll worry about that later. But for right now I'll get set up and we'll head over to, to the uh, other workbench and get this whole thing sprayed up. That gloss will go away as soon as this dries, which will probably be about five minutes. There you go. Nice even coat, no drips, no runs. So here's the helmet after the uh, primer's been sprayed on. It's dry to the touch now, it's dry to handle, but uh, it's going to take a good day or so for that to fully dry. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys basically what we're looking at now. You can see the imperfections just stand right out. Uh, this is going to need a good bit more work, but uh, we'll get it taken care of. Uh, I forgot to mention one other change that I made to the helmet uh, before I started this video. Um, I modified the bottom lip portion. Let me spin it around to, to the other side. The, uh, the bottom lip area right here. Uh, that was not accurate to the movie. Basically before the way it was was it came straight down uh, from the top lip. It came straight down like that. So what I've done to make it more movie accurate is I've angled the bottom portion of that lip at an angle back which is just like the one on the, uh, the movie. I just did that with a little bit of Bondo, took a measurement on both sides, I uh, sloped that back about a quarter of an inch uh, from vertical on the bottom and just Bondoed that, added a little bit, flattened it out, um, so that's a little bit more accurate to the movie now. There's a couple little things that I will have to change still, uh, but we'll get to that so later. The next video I guess will cover the... Uh, the glazing and the spot putty work that will get rid of all those uh, defects that you can now see. Uh, after that we'll lay another coat of primer on probably and uh, we'll get all these lines straightened out. I'll show you guys how to uh, fix all these lines make them all nice and straight even the same width, same depth and uh, get this thing looking a little bit better. So that's where it stands for right now. Uh, thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions, 
shoot me an email or leave a comment, and I'll see you on the next video.